All right, welcome to the last video in our Python module. So now we're going to be making a port scanner. And you heard me say in the last video that it's going to be a terrible port scanner. And it is, but it's going to be a functional port scanner as well. And we'll talk about what we can do to improve it and how we can think this through. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up a gedit here. So I'm going to say gedit and we'll just go ahead and call this scanner.py. And we'll do the ampersand at the end. And let's go ahead and declare that this is going to be Python 3. And now let's talk through some things. So there's going to be a lot of familiarity. Everything I've done up until this point has been for a reason. And you're going to start to see it all tie together. So the end goal of this project is going to be that we run something along the lines of python3 scanner.py and we provide an IP address here. Now with that IP address, it's going to go ahead and scan through a selected port range for us and try to return back results, whether or not the port is open. So we're just checking if a port is open on a machine. So to do that, we're going to need a few things. So first of all, we're going to need to import sys. We're going to import socket as we are going to make a node to node connection. And we're going to import date time from date time as we're going to make a pretty little banner as well. So why was sys important? I told you sys would come back into play. So we have here an argument. So there are actually two arguments in theory. Argument zero is that we're running scanner.py. Argument one is that we are running against an IP address. Now, since we're building this script out, we want it to take two arguments and only two arguments. So we're going to build that into our script from the get go. So let's go ahead and just define our target. And it's always good when you're building out a script to have good notes in there as well. So not only that you can go back and read it, but if you send this to somebody else, they could also read through it as well. So put good comments in here, good notes saying what you're doing. So in this instance, we're going to put an if statement, again, conditional argument here. We're going to say if the length of sys.argv, remember this is the same thing as like a dollar sign one in bash, we're going to take that and we're going to say if it's equal to two, we're going to go ahead and do something. And what we're going to do is we're going to declare a variable of target. And we're going to say socket get host by name. And then we're going to get sysargv1. So we're taking the first argument. Again, this is the same thing as dollar sign one like this in bash. Why are we doing this? Well, we're just translating a host name here to IPv4. Now this is not inherently necessary. We could just declare the target by input. It could just be target equals sys.argv1, but we're just taking an extra step here in case instead of somebody putting in an IP address, they could just put in like a host name. Say we have a host here and it's, you know, like a, one of mine is called the Punisher. You know, what if it we, they put in Punisher? Well, if that Punisher name does DNS and it resolves to an IP address, it's going to go ahead and do that with this argument here. So we're just putting in an extra step, thinking ahead. We also need an else to this. So if it doesn't equal two, if it's three, if it's one, if it's none, then we're going to go ahead and just print out and say invalid amount of arguments. And then we can actually take this here and we can put this into a print statement as well. Just print, just say something like syntax, it's Python 3 scanner IP address, something along those lines. So let's go ahead and I like to always put in a pretty little banner or something, you know, so let's add a pretty banner. And I'm just going to do something like this. I'm going to say print and we're going to do dashes. We'll just do 50 dashes and then we'll go ahead. I'm going to copy this just so it'll be easier. 
and let's go ahead and print a couple things. We'll say print, we'll say scanning target, and then we'll add a space and we'll just do plus target. And then we'll say print time started. And then we can just do a space there plus the string of date time dot now. Now that came back into play as well. So make sure you have three closing parentheses. So we've now utilized sys, socket, and date time, all of which we have seen in the past. And then that last copy paste here for the banner. The next thing we're gonna do is what is called a try statement. So we're gonna try to do something. And if we can't do it, we have exceptions. So you'll see what this looks like when it's all built out. So go ahead and type try, and you're gonna see try later as well when we get into the exploit development. So we're gonna do a for statement. So for port in range. Now we need to specify the range. If we were going to do a full on port scanner, we would do for port one through 65, 535, okay? That will take forever. We'll talk about why. I told you this was a bad port scanner. We'll talk about why we're not gonna do this in a little bit. So let's go ahead and delete these. And we're just gonna put something like 50 to 85. And I'll clarify why we're doing that in just a second. So on top of this, let's add in some familiar language. We're gonna say s equals socket dot socket and then socket dot af underscore inet comma socket dot sock stream. Remember, AFI net is IPv4, sock stream is our port. So we're going to say socket dot set default timeout to one. Why are we doing this? This is going to attempt to connect to a port. If that port is not connectable, it's gonna wait one second and then it's gonna move on. That way we're not sitting there forever trying to make a connection to a port. We set the timeout ourselves. So we're also going to store a result. So the result is going to be s.connect underscore ex, and it's gonna be target comma port. So why are we doing this? Well, when we do this connect underscore ex, right, it returns an error indicator. So I'm gonna put returns an error indicator. If a port is open, the result back is going to be zero. If a port is not open, it's going to throw an error, which is going to trigger a one. So let's think that through. If result is equal to zero, then we're going to go ahead and just print out that this port is open. We'll throw this in here this time for a placeholder instead. We'll say is open and we'll do format port. And then one more thing, I'll close it out and we'll walk through this one more time so that it all makes sense. Okay, so then we're closing the connection. Okay, so we've got this try statement. Let's walk through it one more time. We've got a for loop here. Remember, for is just an iterate. We're going through an iterate. We're going through 450 in, so we're defining a port, right, in this range. So 50, 51, 52, all the way up to 85. We're gonna repeat this whole process. We're gonna establish our variable of s, which we did in the socket video, the previous video, right? We're just declaring, hey, I know I'm gonna wanna connect to IPv4 and a port. When I do make that connection, I want that default timeout to be one second. Okay, so then I'm gonna store inside of a variable of a result, I'm gonna say, let's connect to the target, which we've already established as sysarg v1, and the port, which is our iterate here in our loop. And if that port is open, it's gonna return zero. If it's not open, it's gonna return one. So if that result is zero, go ahead and print out that that port is open close the connection, and then we're gonna go back and try to establish another connection with port, or with, yeah, port number 51, 52, 53. We'll loop through all this until we make it all the way through 85. Okay, so it's just one big loop that we're doing. Now, we need to throw in a few exceptions to make this code really work. So here's an exception. Exception, keyboard interrupt. So if you've been using Linux for a little bit now, 
you should know something like control C is a keyboard interrupt. So if we want to interrupt the scan, we need to define that there is an interruption here. So I'm just gonna put in something like exiting program, okay? And we're gonna say when that happens, when there is a keyboard interrupt, we're gonna say sys exit. That allows for that clean exit. Okay, there's another exception that could be occurred here, right? So we're gonna say socket.gai error. And we're gonna say print hostname could not be resolved. So if we can't resolve the host name, DNS is failing us, we're just gonna go ahead and exit out. And then one more. What if we can't make the connection to the address in general? Well, that's what's called a socket error. So we're gonna say socket.error, and we're gonna print out couldn't, yeah, if I could type, I couldn't connect to server. And then we're also going to exit this. So we'll say sys.exit. So I'll give you a little bit of time to catch up on this script. If you're behind, I was typing fast and talking as well. So one more walkthrough. We're gonna do our for loop through these specific ports, and then we're gonna go ahead and have some exceptions. So we're gonna try these with exceptions here. If we hit Control C, we wanna exit the program. If there's no hostname resolution, we wanna exit the program. If we can't connect to the IP address that we specify, we wanna exit the program. So we need to build in these exits. And these are this, that, <laughs> this is that thinking logically that I talked about uh, earlier in earlier videos, right? That we, it wouldn't hurt to build this out and then just think logically. And I will be the first person to tell you that when I build a script out and I write it, it's always terrible. First time's always terrible. 10th time, still probably pretty terrible. You have to start thinking of things logically. Like, you might not define an if statement at the beginning, right? You might have to think through that because you might need one argument or two arguments or three arguments and you don't know. So maybe this doesn't look like this and it doesn't look like the pretty banner in here either. And you just start with this for loop. And then you realize, well, maybe I should make that a try statement because what if the user wants to exit or there's no connection for a host name or there's no connection to the server? How do we get out of that? or else we're just gonna be stuck in this for loop until it's done, but if we get into one of these error situations, it's gonna get weird, right? So, and then you start thinking through, okay, well, I know my arguments, so let me go add in a statement at the top so the user knows how to use it, and then maybe I'll put a pretty banner in there when it's all said and done, and it starts to really, you know, design itself. Now, before we run this, let's talk about why this isn't great. This is going to sit here and run through one port at a time for a second of a timeout and then reiterate. This is gonna take a little bit to run through these little ports. Now, when we get into scanning, you're gonna see that there are tools out there designed that do it much better, much more efficiently and much faster. This is not the best way. There is something that we could do called threading. Now threading would take the process and run multiple processes at once for us and allow us to scan a lot of ports at once. That would be a potential idea here and there's just improvements that we can do. You know, um, some of the things that we thought about already, like the, the socket get host by host name, you might not have thought about that in your first iteration. You might just say, hey, I want to just put it to IPv4. And what happens if, you know, we supply an argument and the argument is something like a mixed bunch of numbers? You know, it could be like 152, and then you got letters, and somebody mistypes, or or what if you give, you know, an IP address that doesn't exist, something like this, or, you know, maybe like 256 dot or 257 or something, you know, that that isn't possible. How is that built in? How are we going to prevent that in our script right now? Not that big of a deal. We're writing this for ourselves. So, you know, it's not it doesn't have to be perfect. But if we write this for somebody else, we go put this on GitHub. We kind of want all those errors to be handled. And that's where these exceptions come into play and these if statements at the beginning come into play as well so we can handle those errors and those exceptions and we can really start thinking logically on how an end user might fat finger something or break a program or do something even maliciously possibly. So there are, are ways around this and we'll talk about it as well when we get into a bash script that I wrote later on in the course and we can kind of look at how that was written and how it strips out some arguments and prevents some human error. Uh, but we'll get to that later. So let's go ahead and actually save this now. We've got our scanners 
scan our script, and we're gonna go ahead and run it. So I'm gonna run this, and I'm going to run this against my router. So my suggestion to you is to do the same or do it to a machine that you know is in your network and has a port open. Why am I choosing my router and this specific range? Now, my router should have port 53 open because of DNS, and it should have port 80 open because I need to access the web interface on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And I have a typo. <laughs> so I have something called soccer here, I sure do. If you caught that originally, good job. You knew I was gonna mess up. Let's try it one more time. And there you go. So it just ran through it really fast, said port 53 is open, port 80 is open, and immediately, you know, it knew, it knew. So it did its job. It went out there and it found port 53 and port 80, which is what I was expecting. Hopefully yours did the same. Now I could back this off to one through, you know, 65,535. And another thing we can do, if you wanna see the speed, Let's say 65, 535. I am going to keyboard interrupt this, but we can print out something along the lines of checking port, and then we'll do something like this. Okay, and then we say dot format and then port. So when we save this and we run it, let's take a look now. So it's checking through all these ports. It's going kind of fast, but look, it's it's finding ports, but this isn't pretty, right? We, we wouldn't want this. We only want it to say when the port's open, but it's taking some time. Um, we're on port 20,000 of 65,000. So on top of, you know, just being being a little bit annoying, it's uh, it's really, you know, throwing our screen into 20,000 lines now. So the only reason I would put a statement in here like this is if I was doing a couple numbers and I wanted to see, like if we go back to 50 and to 80, we'll do 81. If we do this, it's a good way to see how fast your scanner's running, if it's running. It's a good way to have print statements in there if you might see any errors. And you could see it ran through 80 pretty fast and found 53 and 80 open. So I would delete this. If you want to do a full port scan, again, you could do one through 65, 535. Go ahead and save that. Sorry if you heard my dog barking. It's really windy tonight. So we're gonna go ahead and do it one more time. And now it should be a little prettier. And then as the ports are open, it'll print out. And if you wanna get fancier, you could have a little thing at the bottom that says, hey, this took this long to scan. Here's how many ports are open, etc." So this is finding all the ports. So I'm gonna go ahead and control C and you can see now exiting program, our keyboard interrupt worked. So everything is working really, really well. And that is it. So that's it for the Python series. And hopefully this all made sense. This all built upon it. You know, we could take this and the goal here again is not to be an expert in Python. The goal here is to get you interested in Python, to get you seeing that it's really not that bad. And in about an hour and a half to two hours time, we started with nothing and built out a nice script that all, you know, just built lesson upon lesson until we got here. So we're gonna move on and actually get into the hacking. You have successfully completed all of your foundational courses. We've got the Linux down, we've got the networking down, we've got the Python down, and now we're ready to get into the good stuff. So I'm very excited to do the hacking. This is our, our strong suit, this is our bread and butter, and we're really gonna knock it out of the park. So I will catch you over in the next video when we start learning about hacking.